In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear friends, on the day of the baptism, Emily was welcomed into the church, given the life in Christ, and clothed with the garment of salvation. Today we greet the body of our sister and surround her with the church's prayer. We commend our sister Emily to the mercy of God and pray that the promise made to her in baptism will be fulfilled. Further. My dear friends, I welcome you as we gather to celebrate this Mass of Christian burial for the soul of Emily and those who know her as Charlie. In particular, to Katharina and Ken, to Megan and Josh, to her partner Ryan, and to all you friends and family who have gathered, and those joining us on live stream. We, on behalf of our parish here at Holy Rosary, extend our sincere compassion and love to you as we celebrate her life. For a moment, let us put ourselves in God's presence and ask for his love and compassion. Let us pray. Lord, your wisdom governs the length of our days. We mourn the loss of Emily, whose life has passed so quickly, and we entrust her to your mercy. Welcome her into your heavenly dwelling and grant her the happiness of everlasting youth. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now. A reading from a letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. 
Brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven. And it is from there that we are expecting the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body around the new nation, that it may be conformed to the body and his, of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. John, beloved, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do is this. When He is revealed, we will be like Him, for we will see Him as He is. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go now to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. Jesus, greatly disturbed in spirit, and deeply moved, said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying. Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying next to it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man said to him, Lord, Already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. <laughs> Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that it was you who sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus! come out. The dead man came out, 
his hands and feet bound in strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go free. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, in the beautiful stone chapel at St. George's in England, the Queen, her family, friends, and dignitaries have gathered together with friends and neighbors to support them in the loss of Prince Philip, her husband. Here in this beautiful wooden structure, this sacred space, Holy Family Church, we have gathered as friends and family, whether here in the church or streamlined, to give support, comfort, and compassion to the members of Emily Charles family. He was 99. She is 23. And in the eyes of God, we are all the same. It's not about the age. <clears throat> Why? Well, on September the 5th in 1997, Mother Teresa died, and she was a woman who experienced the dark night of the soul amidst all the things that she did. And she was well on in years. But we know she didn't have any possessions of her own. On August the 31st, that same year, Lady Diana died, also a troubled soul, also in tragedy, had everything at her fingertips. And yet, they too were the same before God. Easter tells us that Jesus did not suffer and die just for one class of people, but for everyone whom God had created in that great act of love. My dear friends, in the 19th century in Paris, France, there was a doctor and he had his office not very far from where the circus was. And after he heard the trials and the tribulations and pronouncing sicknesses on people, he would always leave in the evening time and go to the circus for a few moments. And there was a clown there by the name of Devereux, and he really found him to lift his spirit and bring joy to his life. One day, a patient came into his office, and he told the doctor that he was very troubled in mind and heart. What was he to do? The doctor said, well, go out and socialize, but if you want a good lift up in life, 
go to the circus and see the clown devil and he will lift your spirits and in a painful almost silent voice the man said to the doctor I am devil It goes to show us that in our lives made up of many facets, whether it be physically, mentally, spiritually, or emotionally, we all carry this human condition. We are all as human being, human beings. We're broken in some way. We have trials and tribulations. And sometimes we can cope with them very well. And other times we can't. Do we know living in this pandemic? We all cry out and wish to be unlocked from that which binds us so that we might be set free and go on with our lives. And yet we know in this church that we are in, in the hearts of Emily's loved ones, there is a sense of feeling lost. There is sadness and emptiness there is grieving and there is almost numbness about a life that has ended so quickly. But we know we are also in a time of the churches here that God tells us in this Easter story he continues to fill us with new life. Aren't we today like Martha and Mary, who have lost a loved one and don't know where to turn, and they send the message to their friend Jesus? And they want him to come heal their pain, be with them in grief, and even go far as to say, if you had been here, our brother would never have died. That's the first part of Mark's statement. The second part is the important part. But she says, I know that you can call out to God your Father and He will give Him new life. Martha tells us that the ifs of our lives are part of the past. And we ask ourselves all these questions at times like this. If I had done this, if I had been, if, and we know there are absolutely no answers. What we are asked to do is to step forward in faith in that second part of Martha's statement and say, Lord, I know that if we call out to you, you will give her new life. That's what God's grace is about. That's what the blood of Christ was about. That we can pass from death to new life. And when we look at Emily, or Charlie, whatever name you use for her, 
when you speak of her, you talk about one that if she gave you a hug, it was a genuine hug. So much so with the hymn, Gift of Fire Street. She used to say well, that you satisfy the hungry heart with the gift of fire hug. That bonding and that love. You know of her sense of affection. You know she was a girl of no frills. She wasn't in the spurging. She would save whatever she had. And in the stories you tell about her, you tell the one about the cooking oil in the cupboard. She was rummaging into the cupboard. Katharina had the oil there for cooking French fries. Emily goes over and gets it, the cover comes off, and she covers herself on the floor with it. And what could be a moment of scolding her for doing it became a moment of a great belly laugh. Because every time she started to get up, she'd slip again and try again and slip again. And it became part of a memory. Maybe you are a friend that she helped out. Maybe you are one of the ones that felt her protection and her sense of her caretaker. You know, in a CC just outside of Rome, at 12 o'clock, the bell tolls. And a man comes into the center of the square with a bucket in his hand. And the pigeons and the birds of all around the neighborhood come to town square to be fed. In your stories you tell about her feeding the pigeons, how they will come down around her, and she never flinched, just fed. Or the crows, this this part of her that could reach out to animals and birds and just in the little things of life. You know also that she tried to do right by everyone and never wanted to be a burden to any. But when she knew what she wanted, get out of her way as she was getting. And I think when we gather in the midst of this tragedy, this loss, this sense of emptiness, you know, there are many scriptural passages that can unfold for us that we try to take comfort from. And one of them that has been in my mind for the last couple of days is simply this. Though the mountains may fall or the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name. Sing the praise and the glory of God. Because in our first reading, we heard that our time here on earth is but for a while, but our true citizenship is in heaven, where we can experience the glory of God. And the second reading would unite with that and tell us that we are all God's children whether we are as old as 99 of Prince Philip, or 23 of hers, or a lady die in the middle of her life, and Mother Teresa in the agedness of her life. Every one of us are loved by the same God. And yes, like Martha and like Mary, we need to call out 
we also need to see in Jesus when his friend died, he was disturbed in spirit. And the gospel says he wept for the love of his friend. And why wouldn't he? And then comes that moment in the gospel when he calls Lazarus forth. Lazarus, come forth. And then what happens? He knows what Lazarus has been through in the depths and the valleys of his life. And he says, Unbind him. Let him go free. Unbind him. Let him go free. We who are gathered with you today as family, friends, partner, whoever you are, we ask of our God the same thing. Unbind Emily Charlie. Let her go free. Where? In to the glory and love of God. Because God does not judge one moment or one act in our lives, but the wholeness of our lives, however long or short it is. And the mission and the love of God revealed in Jesus in his suffering and death, that we might know the love and the glory of God. We pray that she experienced that this day. So let us pray for one another in the quiet of our hearts. We stand now to offer our prayers. My dear friends, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of God our Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. In baptism, and we receive the light of Christ. Stand in the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Our sister Emily was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. The family and friends of Emily seek comfort and consolation. Heal the pain and dispel the darkness and dope that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Emily Noel. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectations of your Son's coming. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who have gone before, marked with the sign of faith, especially Sarah Murphy and Francesca Tang. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated now for the presentation. sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good the good of all his holy church. Look favorably upon our offerings, O Lord, so that our departed sister Emily may be taken into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. But in this time to acclaim you, O Lord, in and to laud you ever more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For he is dead is our ransom from death and his resurrection the life of all the risen. Therefore with pastoral joy every land every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with angelic hope sing together the unending hymn of your glory. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the new falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We stand proclaiming the song, the mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all who minister to your people. Remember our sister Emily, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your Son, in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> Jesus invites us to pray. <coughs> Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. We recognize the presence of each other with some sign of the peace of Christ. Thank you. 
Say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Thank you. 
Lord our God, source and destiny of our lives. In your loving providence, you have given us Emily to grow in wisdom and grace. And now she is called to you. As we grieve the loss of one so young, we seek to understand your purpose. Draw her to yourself and give her full stature in Christ. May, may she stand with you, with the angels and saints. Know your love and praise your saving will through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, trusting in God, we have prayed together for Emily, and now we come to this last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy friendship once more. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the great love and the mercy of God will gather us together again into the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, we console each other in the faith of Jesus Christ. In baptism, Emily shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May she be welcomed into the glory of eternal life. respect for our sister Emily who let this incense rise to God who has called her to share in his glory. Into your hands, O God of mercy, we commend Emily in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many, many blessings that you bestowed upon her in this life, especially the blessings of family and of friends, good friends. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our communion with the saints in Christ. Merciful God, turn toward us, listen to our prayers, and open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith, until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with Emily forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, I thank you for your presence here today. I thank all who have joined us uh, on the streamline. I thank you for your comfort and support to the family over the last number of days, and in particular for any act of kindness that you showed to Emily in her life's journey. My dear friends, may every mark of affection, every gesture of friendship which you give to each other be a sign of God's peace for you. In peace now, let us take our sister to her place of rest.